Um, my name is Nathaniel Meisner. I'm a sales engineer with Image Trend, and I'm going to walk you through the use of Elite Field to document an EPCR on an EMS call and show you some of the features and functionality uh, that can simplify documentation and, and make it uh, easy to get your charts done. So I'm going to go ahead and log in to Elite Field, which is our online and offline capable incident documentation platform. What's nice about being online and offline is that uh, if you do lose internet connection, you will not lose your data. And that's important as you're working in rural areas. Now I'm in elite field here. And what I would do at the beginning of my shift is go ahead and add my crew members and crew member roles. So I'll go ahead and add myself to this. Uh, if I'm performing in a specific role like paramedic or primary patient giver, I can go ahead and indicate that right here. And I can go ahead and add an additional crew member to my to my apparatus as well. Now, if I'd like to, I can also go ahead and identify what which uh, medic unit I'm on. If this medic unit has a particular call sign, I set that up. And what this does is as I'm adding charts throughout the day, I'm not having to duplicate this sort of information every time I start a new chart. If I had a medical device or a shift, I can go ahead and indicate that as well. An example of that might be a Zoll or Physio Life Pack, Physio Life Pack or Zoll X Series monitor that you'd like to have automatically linked up to your chart. When it comes time to create a new incident, uh, I'm going to go ahead and create one from up here, and I can simply open this up. And it's it, because my demo site here is connected to a CAD. I do have the ability to go ahead and pull in CAD call information. In this case, I'll go ahead and grab this first call here. Now, the advantage to being connected to a CAD is that uh, you can pre-populate things like address, the location of your, your incident. Um, we can even populate pre-populate crew members if, if you have a staffing integration. So things like incident times and such will pre-populate into the incident form for you so that you're not having to manually enter that data. Once I'm in the run form, uh, keep in mind this is a sample version of a run form. These run forms can be set up in different ways, specific to either BLS providers or ALS providers, or even for air services. We can have different kind of workflows depending on the, the type and style of workflow that you prefer. Now, because I pulled in a CAD, things like my response number and incident number have already been pre-populated. Things like dispatch information can be uh, established ahead of time. Even the, the re complaint reported by dispatch is being populated into my PCR for me. If I didn't have a CAD, I would simply have to make those selections manually. There is some additional information as I go through. Things like whether or not I'm going to make patient contact will depend on the scene-specific information. In this case, I'll go ahead and leave this blank, but I've filled out the majority of this entire first section by integrating with my CAD. Once I arrive on scene, there will be some scene information. And typically on scene, you're going to determine, you know, whether or not you have patients, whether it's single patient, multiple patient, or none. Above here, though, I want to call out a function that we have, and it's called preset values. Preset values make it uh, very quick and easy for you to document a variety of different scenarios in your system. Each system is going to have their own frequent types of incidents or locations, and, and these buttons are really valuable for that. And I have a few examples of what that might be right here. Up at the top, you can see that I have a preset value for a single patient transport or a single patient refusal. I also have one for a non-patient or a cancel prior to arrival. So depending on my scenario, I can simply click on one of these buttons and I can pre-populate all of the data selections required for that particular incident type without having to go through and manually click all of these buttons uh, one by one. When I apply these changes, they apply to my form and, and assist me in completing out the documentation for this particular incident. As I move through, if, if I was, you know, not collecting a patient refusal and maybe I had a patient that I was going to assess, I would be able to move down through the various different tabs in order to complete my requirements. Anything that's required will be highlighted in red and is also accessible down here at the bottom by validation rules. And so this helps you because you can simply click any one of these arrows and it'll take you directly to the rule or the item that you're missing. In this case, I still have some dates and times that still need to be filled out. If I was to navigate to here, it would take me to the time field where I could simply go ahead 
and click the time fields and get that documentation completed. Now, if I was to make patient contact on this particular call, although I did start with a patient refusal, I could come over here and I can use functionality like the ability to scan a driver's license barcode to pre-populate data into the run form. Uh, we do have available integrations to things like Hantevi and Pulsera. Uh, we have integrations with uh, EKG monitors and the ability to pull in your your Zoll EKG data, Philips, or Physio. And you can always also pull in the most recent version of CAD, depending on, you know, if you, if you pull that CAD in the beginning of your call and later in the call there's additional information available, I can update that by simply clicking this button up top. Now, if I was to go ahead and enter in some patient information, and let's say this patient I've run before, my system is automatically going to be searching for historical matches to that particular patient record. And in this case, I have a patient match and it will populate a list of names of, of individuals that match that first and last name or social, whatever requirements you guys set up. And in this case, you can see here that my repeat patient with the social of all nines was available in the system and I can pull this in, which is going to bring in historical data, past medical history, meds, allergies, all of that sort of information for that patient, reducing the burden of incident demographic documentation for me. As I move through my chart, I've made patient contact. The next thing that I'm probably gonna do is perform some sort of assessment. What I like to use for our assessment is over here on the right-hand side, we have what's called power tools. Power tools are built to streamline your incident documentation around a series of different buttons. Likely, I would start my assessment with a uh, start with an assessment or a physical assessment, and uh, you can see here it's broken out by body system. But in the case of a minor incident, maybe I have something like a simple a leg abrasion, and I can go ahead and actually mark all of these as normal, and then come back and provide exceptions like a like a left leg abrasion with swelling and tenderness. By doing so, I've now completed a head to toe documentation with the left leg with left leg injury. The next thing that I'll probably do is conduct some vital signs. And I have a couple of buttons here for vital sign assessment. And this one's specific to ALS providers, but uh, you can have an ALS or BLS provider button here. And we have this laid out so that you can uh, come through and click through your blood pressure, how you obtained your pressure, what your respiratory rate was, pulse ox, those sort of things. And as I'm documenting these, it, it can open up a touch screen keypad for me to be able to document any number of items here. And you can see here, I've even included things like a pain scale, a blood glucose level, a GCS score, all of which will, will make it so that I'm not having to navigate around throughout the form in order to document a quick and easy set of vital signs. Once I've completed that, I'm likely going to have some sort of procedure to document. And for today, I'll give you an example where I might document an 18 gauge IV. When I'm documenting an 18 gauge IV, I may also need to document a saline administration because to start that IV, I also am going to at least do a saline flush, in which case I've created a default procedure here that's going to automatically uh, document the, the 18 gauge IV for me. And all I have to do is simply click the location and fill out a few other pieces here, things like response to medication. And when I click OK, I've now documented both an 18 gauge IV and a saline administration for that particular procedure. We have a number of other power tools in here, things for like 12 leads and other types of procedures. Maybe you have specific procedures in your agency around narcotics like ketamine or morphine or fentanyl, or maybe a Narcan intranasal administration. All of these buttons are designed to make it quick and easy for you to document individual procedures without having to navigate throughout the system. Another functionality on top of these, pre or these power tools here is the ability to use what we call situation tools. And in your high acuity situations where you want to maintain your focus on the patient and you're not having time to click through a variety of different buttons, we're able to, to pull together some of those power tools with very specific presets within them so that, for example, if you're on scene of a cardiac arrest, you're able to just simply click these buttons and document and timestamp the various procedures that you're performing on scene. An example of how this may work is that I arrive on scene and I notice cardiac arrest and I initiate CPR and I put them on the monitor. Uh, as soon as I put them on the monitor, I note that they are uh, in a rhythm that I can defibrillate and I go ahead and perform a defibrillation, open the airway, maybe I perform an oral intubation, 
and eventually get around to pushing some epinephrine and then come back and I'm uh, able to defibrillate a couple minutes later. So obviously I worked through that very quickly, but you can see how quick and easy it would be to be able to perform a number of different procedures so that you're not having to focus on your computer, you're able to focus on your patient and provide care in, in a good way. Now, as I move on down down the chart here, the next section that I'm probably going to get to after I've completed my call and, and I've documented my different procedures is that I'm going to have to write a narrative. We do also have the ability to have either custom auto narratives or some, some classic ones like a sequential or charted narratives. And if your agency allows you to have these, then you'll be able to click and generate an automatic narrative to, to streamline documentation for you and your agency. Obviously, we encourage you all to read through these and make sure that they're acceptable for your specific agency, but it is functionality that can be utilized to streamline documentation. If your particular agency requires a set of signatures, we have a signatures grid that allows you to come in here, grab your patient signatures, and you can grab signatures for a variety of different reasons and at one time and populate all of the different tests, text associated with that so that you're only having to come in here and have that patient sign one time for the various reasons. If your agency is performs EMS billing, we have a billing and insurance section for you to be able to capture that information to optimize your, your workflows as it relates to billing and billing recovery. And before I proceed through the rest of these, one thing I want to come back to is this timeline that's up here on the right hand side. And as you can see, I've been generating a timeline of events throughout this particular incident. And as I do that, any of the items that still have validation rules associated with them that I would need to complete are being highlighted in red so that I can simply navigate back to those particular items and resolve those issues. But in addition to this patient timeline, I also have what's called a patient encounter timeline. This patient encounter timeline, if you recall, I pulled in a patient that we had seen before. And I have the ability in our system to pull back and look at historical vital signs for that patient that we ran and how many times we've run them and what their vital signs were on different times and dates. For example, we're looking at this patient's historical blood sugar. However, we can also look at this patient's historical blood pressures, the historical dispatch reasons, and if we wanted to, we could even look at historical medical device procedures. If we had historical 12 leads, we'd be able to view those and compare them against against current 12 leads that we're seeing with the patient on scene today. As a clinician, this can really help to help you to make quality decisions for patient care as you move, as you're providing care on scene. Now, for those of you who may have fire agencies, uh, fire departments as part of your agency, and you're required to complete the associated fire report or infers report, nearest is soon to come. You, we have this ability to insert a link to your fire incident report here, where you can simply click a button that will take you over to the fire incident report. It will push over your incident documentation, your incident times, your incident location, and those sort of pieces. And then you can simply come over here and leverage those same preset buttons that we were talking about on the other side, things like canceled and route, or maybe your classic uh, a motor vehicle accident of a 321 or, or something like that. And you can click this, apply those changes, and be close to complete with your report with the exception of maybe a couple of time validation rules that you need to resolve. And then you simply navigate right back to the EMS incident documentation form where you can continue on with your documentation. That provides a top to bottom quick review of, of a simple approach to incident documentation. There are a number of other ways to streamline documentation, but um, that's that's a very classic approach. When uh, One more thing to point out before we close and post this report is if you had the need to add any sort of attachments, you are able to add any photos that you need to with utilizing the attachment feature here. And when I'm done with this report, I simply come up here and click the post button. And this post button will give me the opportunity to finish both my EMS and the fire incident if, if we're leveraging that functionality for our fire departments. And I simply click post and I can be completed with both incidents on, the, on this particular call. If by chance this, this call did happen to have an additional patient, I can add a patient to this incident and 
It will open a new PCR with the same incident documentation, and I'm able to toggle between the multiple patients that I may have on an individual scene by leveraging this drop down here. If I have one patient, two patients, three patients, it doesn't matter. I can toggle between each individual without having to re-enter data from patient to patient. That concludes our overall review of the PCR documentation for ImageTrend. I appreciate the opportunity to share this with you, and, and we'd be happy to uh, discuss additional workflows and, and customized workflows for, for different agencies.